Now we're talking. Despite being a power wear, this is one of my absolutely favourite UPSs of all time. It's a 1 kilo VA unit which, which doesn't even have proper sine wave output. It's got the jagged, uh, horrible fake sine wave thingy, almost square wave. But just look at this thing. Look at those vents, look at the fan grill. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> I just love the way they've designed this unit. It looks so industrial and, uh, well, hardcore, in lack of a better word. This unit was also sold under the Fiskars brand for some reason. Fiskars, if you don't know, generally make kitchen knives and scissors and stuff like that. Anyway, let's plug this thing in and see what it'll do. It should work. There you can hear the weird jagged sine wave inverter and we're up and running I love how you can just toggle the output like that without turning the unit off, I don't think you actually can turn it entirely off no that's not gonna happen I gotta show you the self test, I like that yeah, that's not... <laughs> I just turned it... took the power cord out, the lifters aren't running, that didn't look too good. But check for self-test. You press the mute button. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Isn't that funky? Oh, better get this unit tested, because sadly I have no purpose for it, so... It's gonna get sold. Okay, so let's see how long this thing will run with my 500 watt load. It switched over all right. I love the sound of this thing. Just listen to that harsh switching noise. You just hear those hard transients beating away at the transformer. Uh, I don't know, I, I like things like that. It doesn't have anything else, it just goes on with lots of brute force. Oh yes. Another great thing about this unit is that you do all the configuration from the front panel. The PC interface on the back is pretty much uh, only for monitoring. And you Essentially just use these three buttons and uh, the gra use the LEDs as graph bars in combination with a little cheat sheet and you can set pretty much every setting. And since I've used this UPS myself, I've silenced the alarm permanently. So this thing will never ever beep. Not even when it's got a bad battery. And that's... Uh, I think that's even more flexible than what you can get on one of these black APCs. And that's from a unit from the 90s, which I think these were competitors with the uh, Back UPS Pro units, but uh, not quite as refined. And yeah, they offered a lot of flexibility for the money, definitely. We're approaching the end of the batteries. This seems to be about as efficient as a Black APC. They run for about 15 minutes on a pair of these batteries. They are 12 amp hour, or well, 15. So, this thing is not only well built and good looking, it's also efficient. And if you feel the air coming out of the back end, it's, it's cold really, it's room temp. And that's more than what you can say for a 1500 VA black APC where the air com coming out of a fan is warm to the touch. So let's see where this thing cuts out. It's going to breach 15 minutes. 16 minutes. There we go. From where it went up, 16 minutes, 38 seconds. Hmm. That's quite respectable. I don't mind that deeper discharge 
at all because well the internal resistance of these batteries since they're so small is quite high so even if we discharge them as low as 18 and a half volts or so they're still going to go up when they when the load gets taken off and it's not going to be a more than perhaps a 70% discharge at the most unless you have a very light load on it so yeah <laughs> my favorite unit still lives up to its reputation I guess okay so I printed out part of the manual for it and uh, hey, can it, so you're supposed to press and hold the on button to get into configuration mode so let's start by Turning it on. There we go, it's on. Okay, so it's a bit to press these two together. Is that configuration mode? Yeah, for one beep it says. So let's see what we can actually do with this thing. Nominal voltage. 230 volts. So let's see how this thing is configured. It seems the entire bar there is about the how it's wiring. These four options, the four top LEDs, set with set the voltage for you. It's set to 230, which is okay. It's got a alarm. If you're missing ground, it can tell you that. But we don't want that, so let's move on. Low battery alarm, alarm sounds 3 minutes before battery sh shut down, 5 minutes before battery shut down. So you can't actually turn the low battery alarm off, but we'll put it on the lower, on the shorter duration, since this unit is probably going to be used by a personal computer, not a server. So there we go, we'll toggle that on with the mute button. Next one, shutdown delay, 5 second delay. Rather, this is for the COM port. I don't think that's going to be used, we'll just leave that be. Next option is the AC alarm, we don't want that. Sleep mode, we don't want that. We don't want to reset the defaults, and I think that's that, yeah. So that's the amount of options you can set on this thing. Not a whole lot, it's pretty dumb, but. It's enough to get the unit working. Now, I wonder how you actually get out of this <laughs> configuration mode. Probably by holding the power and mute buttons again. Yep. And there we go, we're back, back online. The only real downside to this unit is that it's got a stupid battery charge like an APC. It just floats for batteries and I don't know how you change the voltage on it. It's set to float at about 13.75 volts per battery which is, well, it's too high. You probably have to do a hardware modification on it to change that voltage. But I'm just gonna leave that be. Right, moving on from my favourite powerware to my favourite APC. This is a Back UPS Pro 1400VA. I think this is from the mid 90s, and it's essentially a white uh, smart UPS like the one I've got down here. One of these guys, except. It's stone dead stupid. It does support the smart protocol and I did hook it up briefly to communicate with a computer and if we query it for all the known uh, smart uh, protocol values you can see it's just not available, not available all the way through. <laughs> Epong string is two characters long. So this thing doesn't have any kind of battery calibration, it doesn't have any kind of brains to it whatsoever. It just takes some batteries and runs till they're dead. And if we take a look inside we can see the glorious old school design of this thing with 
big 40 pin socket mounted processor and some <laughs> those are probably logic gates and discrete transistors on the side so these units tend to be incredibly reliable the build quality of the actual PCB is fantastic I, I, I'm i gonna pop the cover on it and we'll have a look there you go just look at all those beautiful shiny solder joints the soldering quality on these old APC boards are just absolutely astonishing it just looks perfect and since this unit despite being a 1.4 kVA rated 1 is passively cooled it's barely got any dust in it so it's got a bit cover on the transformer but that's about it that's more than you can say about the black 1.5 kVA units and if we take a look at the actual build quality, this one does have TPO caps so that's kind of iffy I know they used to be 100% Japanese but there's a fair amount of ceramic caps and things like that and all solder joints are nice through plated ones which are never gonna fail and we've got a neatly laid out view relays back there seems it's got some kind of AVR at least if we look at the amount of relays and the amount of cables going to the transformer so that's good the transformers are quite small in them though for the rating but eh, the reliability I've seen out of this unit <laughs> give me really no reason to complain however <laughs> They rarely are pretty spartan back here. You've got some kind of... Is that a phone line or an ethernet connection? Probably phone line protection. Doesn't say. A serial port which doesn't really do anything. You can tell you when it's running on batteries and when it's not and when it's got low battery pretty much. And <laughs> four entire power outlets. But... For a passively cooled 1.4 kVA unit, I'm not complaining. And just look at that board. It, it's pornographic. Neatly laid out all over. The build quality is just so good. Mm. Look at that! Shiny! So shiny! But alas, if we pray the view of the 22 microfarad TPO caps in it, yeah, we've got some failures. These are definitely going to have to be replaced. Thanks for the build quality of this board, that's not a problem. Got my iron set to 300 degrees Celsius. No worries. Well there we go, all better. All the 22 microfarad TPO caps have been replaced with proper quality Nishikon and uh, Panasonic units. So this thing was very groany when I started up on battery for a test before I replaced the caps. So let's see if that problem's gone away. Also let's see if it works at all because I ran out of 22 microfarad caps and had to use a couple of 47s instead in one place. So it shouldn't be a problem because if a capacitance matters a whole lot they wouldn't use TPO electrolytic caps there. Anyway, let's go. Oh, 
Oh, it's still quite groany. But it doesn't seem to be blowing up or anything. I'd say that's a success. I measured all the other caps as well and they're fine. It has some weird brown thing there and a Panasonic in there but I can't really find many other electrolytics caps inside this unit. It's mostly just film and ceramics so that's a good thing. Now oh well, let's get this thing back together. Oh, and I wonder if that alarm can be turned off. There's a risk that it can't. Hmm. But these units do have their drawbacks as well. This one's got way too high a float voltage at 27.6 volts. And you can't set the charging voltage through software since it's so dumb. However, I know that there's a hard mod you can do. You just have to replace a resistor or two in order to change the charging voltage, but that's a bit of a project. I do have a schematic for this unit somewhere, found it on some Russian site, so I might, if I rarely feel like being bothered to do it, actually lower the charging voltage by adding a resistor. But, yeah, otherwise this unit is fine. Seems to work, seems to run. Shame you can't turn off the alarm. Okay, so since this is a stupid UPS that uh, doesn't know the first thing about battery calibration, I figured we'd do a little experiment to see if this thing can power this UPS. And uh, <laughs> I know this power supply can give, well, over 50 amps peak, but uh, in continuous runtime it struggles with even 30 because the transformer will overheat. I might do something about that in the future. But for now, I just want to see if this thing, in combination with my APC testing cap, will put out a clean enough voltage to actually run this unit. So I've got to be very excited to just about the right voltage. If we turn it up just a little, we get up there. So let's turn this thing on and see what happens. I've got my normal 500 watt load hooked up. This thing is going to run a self test. So we'll see what happens to the voltage. It wasn't happy. This thing has too high an output impedance. It shut up. Okay, so I've got my scope and meter hooked up to the UPS as output. And uh, I've also got a 2 kilowatt fan. So let's see how this thing deals with a bit of overloading. That didn't look very good, not at all. Getting a bit more sensible, I've got a 1 kilowatt fan here for time. Just gonna run for a while. Look the entire thing, warm up, see if it runs okay. And after that, I'm probably gonna try and order some batteries for this thing and sell it. I would use those, but they, go, they are going into a 1.5 kVA smart UPS because those have quite a bit more retail value. Anyway, let's go. I think it... Hmm. Okay. Take two, I put the fan on the low setting. That looks a bit better. You can see the little harmonics on that wave. It's probably being a bit confused since... Whoa, that's got low. Since the high current power supply is giving it a lot of its power, and that thing doesn't have enough capacitance to give up the proper DC output, so it's slightly modulated at 50 Hz. Could probably deal with bumping up the voltage on that a bit. Anyway, 
seems to run a KO ball there. This is the 650 watt setting, I think. Well, I'll let the heater and the fan warm up a bit now, so let's see if we can run it to 1 kilowatt. I don't think so. Well, it's running on the mains, and I don't think it's gonna run that fan. So, running with a 650 watt load, and the high current power supply turned down fairly low. It's mostly running off of battery power, but you can see the harmonic distortion of this waveform so well. It's almost eerie. The regulation of this UPS doesn't seem to be very good. So I think I might actually have to redact my claim of it being one of my favorite units because I know that the smart UPS ones, the more modern ones, have a way nicer waveform no matter the load you put on them. And, well, this is just a normal resistive load, it's a fan. So, yeah. You can see the little harmonics though, it's kind of funky. Nothing wrong with that. Of a clipping. No good. Well, it's been running for a few minutes now, and the MOSFETs are starting to get quite hot in it. They do have much bigger heat sinks than most other APCs of this size, so that's a good thing, but they can't sustain continuous operation, so. About 10 minutes at 650 watts load, I'd say that's about a battery charge. And it made it, so I'm going to call this unit good. Nice. I don't know, there's something afoot around here. And there we go, final destination. All this stuff is starting to come together, but there's still a few more units to go through, so... Stay tuned for the next video, and... Thanks for watching. Cheerio!